starting from LCS, follow the traffic on Main Street. Make an easy left. Just thinking of the World Wide Web and its pointers, every human being has these spaghetti things going out to every other computer and human being, and there's this gigantic mass of spaghetti spanning the entire globe. And if you want to find out something, how do you find it out? The bits are moving around so fast that hardly anyone has thought to preserve them, to archive them. And the way the technology is changing hasn't helped us either. You know, a piece of paper sticks around for 500 years, and by golly, it's legible to human eyes. So it's not likely that human eyes are going to change in another 500 years. But of course, disks and memory and data formats change every couple of years. As the huge and vastly growing human record, all the data that we as mankind have accumulated is growing so rapidly. Who has time, who has the energy, who has the resources? keep looking back and seeing if old information, still useful, is being transformed to the new media before the old media are essentially unusable. We're voyaging into brave new worlds, digital worlds. Go to the future. Electronically recording, gathering, creating and connecting a universe of information and knowledge and making it available at our fingertips. But the sheer quantity of digitized information and the dynamics of an evolving computerized world create complex problems. One of the most serious is that we pay little attention to preserving electronic writings for the long term, to making sure that important and irreplaceable work will be saved and be available not just for our own use, but for generations to follow. What's increasingly at risk is the survival into the future of recorded knowledge, the survival of collective memory, the core of civilization, the human record. August 25th, 1992, Sarajevo. In the war for Bosnia-Herzegovina, in an act of hatred calculated to destroy collective memory and erase the culture and identity of a people, gunners targeted with hundreds of incendiary rockets the National Library. Tens of thousands of rare Islamic texts, unique 16th century manuscripts, Important works of Bosnian, Croat, and Serb writers and poets. Three million volumes. The irreplaceable history of a people consumed in flames. Even as exhausted citizens joined hands to save what they could of the soul of their city. Catastrophe has always loomed as a threat to portions of the human record through fires and floods, earthquakes and wars, and also in the past 100 years, through the slower fires of acid in the paper of printed materials, much of the history of civilization has been damaged or destroyed. But it's not only the physical survival of recorded information that's crucial to preservation. The ability to decipher and comprehend its meaning is essential as well. For over a thousand years, scholars tried but lacked the knowledge to interpret Egyptian hieroglyphics. Though perfectly preserved through millennia, their meaning had been lost in time. In London's British Museum, intricately carved, is a four-foot-long black stone over 2,000 years old. Discovered in the sands of Egypt in 1799, it is the fabled Rosetta Stone. The information the stone records is unexceptional, 
Except for the remarkable circumstance that identical text is presented in three languages, hieroglyphics, demotics, and finally, readily comprehended Greek. The Rosetta Stone was the key to deciphering and understanding the writings of an entire ancient civilization. Stone has long given way to paper, and today paper is fast giving way to new means of recording and accessing knowledge. The communications complex at Goldstone in California's Mojave Desert. The huge antennas are part of NASA's deep space network, able to receive and process digital electronic signals from unmanned spacecraft millions of miles away. Since 1958, NASA space probes have been generating vast quantities of data. Give me a call. We're unable to assign a couple of these nets. Space missions studying the Earth's environment have generated even greater amounts of data. Information regarding ozone depletion, global warming, the growth of deserts, and other potential threats to life on the planet. Acquired at enormous cost, much of this priceless information stored on magnetic tape is in jeopardy. Twenty years ago or more, the projects were so focused on building the spacecraft and getting the fundamental technology proven and getting to the first visit of the planets that people really didn't look at saving the data for when the mission was over. For example, Viking that went to Mars. The key part of the mission was around 1976. Well, this is 20 years later. Those tapes are decomposing. Now, that was a heavily investigated planet and mission, and a lot of people were familiar with the data, but now enough time has passed. Many of the people have retired, or it's not easy to access the tapes, and it becomes much more important to have them in an archive form. Historically, uh, magnetic tapes, which was the main storage media used until just four or five years ago, uh, you can take one out of the box, record it, and then try to read it and have an error on it. That's how bad it is. Uh, and some of the conversion efforts that we've done over the last few years, we're finding 10 or 20 percent of the tapes have errors on them. So uh, magnetic tape is just a, a disaster for an archival storage media. The problem with preservation is one which archivists and librarians think about because that's their business. But unfortunately, computer science as a field has not had very much interest in this problem. I'm not sure that it isn't aware of it, but it, it has a mindset that says, you know, we are, we are in the business of charging ahead into the future and, and dropping the past behind us and not carrying the baggage of old, obsolete systems. People are more interested in what's the new paradigm? How are we going to create new, more exciting hypermedia with new capabilities that have never existed? But those new capabilities, those paradigm shifts, leave old documents stranded in the past with no bridge to, to the future. Washington, D.C., the National Archives. Over 200 years of the official records of the nation, including the founding documents. There are miles and miles of shelving containing every type of government record. Treaties, letters, patents, maps, architectural drawings. Three billion pieces of paper. The information infrastructure of the nation. Everything determined by the archivist to be of enduring value. There are also millions of microfilms, photographic negatives, motion picture films, phonograph records, and video and audio recordings on various formats. Now, machine-readable materials are by law included as well. It's anticipated that by the year 2000, fully 75% of all federal transactions will be handled electronically. Flowing into the Archives Center for Electronic Records in Maryland are over 800 digital data streams vital statistics on health and welfare, surveys on crime, data on population and housing, and from every government agency, torrents of email communications. 
the amount of archived electronic materials is doubling every year. You can't have a democracy if the government is not accountable to people. And one of the ultimate ways that this government is accountable to people is by maintaining records of what the government did, what it said its policies were, and therefore enabling the people to figure out whether the government acted in accordance with policy and law. Traditionally, we, like basically all the archives in the world that deal with electronic records, ask the originators to send it to us in a form that's not dependent on any specific hardware or software because we have to presume that most of our customers who haven't been born yet are going to want this information at a time when all of the technology used to generate it has disappeared from the marketplace. A highway in New York. Every day, hundreds of hazardous waste shipments, each authorized by a permit, crisscross the state on their way to one of a thousand different disposal sites. The Center for Electronic Records in Albany manages more than a thousand huge databases. The hazardous waste permitting system is just one, but a very important one. There are certain kinds of information increasingly created in electronic form that for society to survive are going to have to be accessible for a very long time. Knowing where we've deposited poisons, radioactive materials, and hazardous wastes is one of them. <laughs> 